Why is David Fincher in my head? I was thinking about this a lot while watching his new Netflix series, Mindhunter. I'd watch an episode or two, go to the kitchen to get a drink, and everything would look Fincher-esque, like my eyes were mimicking his camera movements somehow. First I was creeped out, then I was impressed, and then I was curious. What about his filmmaking causes this effect? Because there are plenty of other amazing stylistic directors whose visual styles don't hijack your senses like Fincher does. And it's the same with all his movies and TV shows. I checked, I went back through all of them to see if I could locate the source of this quality. And I think I found it here. Did you see that? It's a very small thing and it's easy to miss, but the more I watch Fincher's work, the more it stands out as a key element of his visual language. But what is it exactly? Well, it's a camera move. In this case, a tilt. In this case, a pan. In this case, a tracking shot. And in this case, all three. These things are the most common tools in the filmmaker's toolbox. You can find them in pretty much any film you watch. But Fincher has a very specific way of using them, which falls in line with his reputation as a perfectionist. Essentially, what he tries to do is have the camera exactly match the velocity and direction of the moving character in the frame. When the character stops, the camera stops too, and starts again when the person starts to move again. The matching movement here isn't just close. It's perfect. So perfect, in fact, that it must involve some kind of timed rehearsal with the actors, which I learned when I tried to do it myself earlier. Again. This is no doubt a part of the reason why Fincher is known for doing so many takes. It takes patience and a good camera operator to get these moves exactly right. And they're happening all the time, everywhere. In little shots, in between shots, shots you notice and shots you don't. And whether they register or not, the effect starts to accumulate in your mind. All of a sudden, Fincher's reality is your reality. Now, I think there's a very good reason why this happens, and it's a bit counterintuitive when you consider that Fincher's camera work is often regarded as impersonal or coldly omniscient, even by Fincher himself. I think that's somewhat disingenuous, because what these shots do is effectively lock you in to the behavior of the characters. You really feel it when someone moves around the space that they're in. Even small gestures like a shrug or deflated shoulders, even the slightest change in posture is registered by this camera. In this way, I think Fincher's cinematography is a lot more personal than even he makes out. It might happen just below the level of consciousness, but I'm much more in sync with this character than I am with, for example, this character. It's funny, Fincher's actors have to move in these very deliberate lines at steady speeds probably ironed out by rehearsal. But the result, at least for me, is a greater connection to the character than something that is more free form, less exact. I mean, it's no surprise that Fincher would pay attention to details like this. Listen to the advice he gave Robin Wright when she directed her first episode of House of Cards. Every scene you direct, every scene you act in, it's the same thing. What's that, he said? Behavior over time. It's a fraction. So behavior is the most important thing of every piece of material that you read, that you perform in, and you direct. Look at the behavior. David Fincher is obsessed with behavior. He knows that the way a person moves is a key part of who they are and what they want. He knows that if a person is running and the camera follows that running exactly, then it's like the audience is running too. He knows that the truth of exasperation is in the speed someone lurches forward. He knows that fear can express itself in exactly how slow someone stands up or that when a person floats back in astonishment, the camera should float with them. It's not a coincidence that emotion has the word motion in it. Emotions express themselves physically. What Fincher does is put his camera in lockstep with the body to capture that physicality. And as a result, we develop this almost unconscious connection with his characters. But the trick works almost too well. You start to notice behavior and movement in the real world, but in the way that Fincher stages them, deliberate, steady, and precise. For a little while, at least, David Fincher hijacks your eyes. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my video on Fincher. If you want to learn more about him, I definitely recommend watching my friend Tony's video on what he doesn't do in his movies, which is super interesting. Also, Captain Christian did something on the invisible digital effects in Fincher films. 
I'll link both of those below. Definitely watch those. This episode of The Nerd Writer was brought to you by Squarespace. If you want to make a website and you want it to be just a really easy process, Squarespace has some beautiful award-winning designer templates to choose from that makes that process super simple. It's got 24-hour customer service, no upgrades, nothing to install, no patches ever, and picking your domain name is really, really easy too. You can start your free trial at squarespace.com, and if you use the offer code NERDWRITER, definitely use that offer code, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.